Wise Mind is a dialectical behavior therapy mindfulness skill and one of the three states of mind that we can operate out of. Through Wise Mind, we can access our inner wisdom and intuition. Besides Wise Mind, there are two other states of mind reasonable mind and emotion mind, which get in the way of wise mind. Reasonable mind is when a person is only paying attention to reason itself. What you want doesn't matter. What you are hoping for doesn't matter. None of that matters because you are only focused on and looking for what the facts are. Reasonable mind is cool, rational, and task focused. When in reasonable mind, you are ruled by facts, reason, logic, and pragmatics. Values and feelings are not important. We're like Spock on Star Trek, cool, calm, collected, and logical. The other mind is emotion mind, which is the opposite of reasonable mind. Emotion mind is not concerned with facts or logic like reasonable mind is. It is hot, mood dependent, and emotion focused. When in emotion mind, we are ruled by our moods, feelings, and urges to do or say things. Facts and logic are not important. We are like Taylor Swift portraying a character in her music video, Blank Space. Reasonable mind is important for many aspects of our lives and depending on what we are engaging in, sometimes reasonable mind is all we need at the time. And other times, because it is strictly logical and rational, the lack of consideration for our emotions and how we feel when we are operating out of reasonable mind limits its effectiveness for making certain types of plans or decisions and solving problems that have an emotional component to them. For example, a task-focused person attending only to what must be done next and ignoring a conflict with their partner. It's hard to maintain relationships if you are only in reasonable mind because relationships require emotional responses and sensitivity to others' emotions. Emotional mind allows us to be in touch with our feelings and emotions. It can also lead us to act impulsively and make decisions based on what we think will make us feel better right now without regard for how these decisions may impact us in the future. Actions taken while we are in emotional mind are not strategic and acted upon due to intense feelings and a sense of urgency. We are trying to escape some distress that is going on right now. We're not concerned with the long-term consequences and what happens next. An example of when you are in emotion mind is when you see a cute puppy up for adoption and your lifestyle may not be able to care for a puppy, but you adopt it anyway. Other examples include saying something hurtful to a loved one in the heat of the moment, falling in love, or using drugs. There are various vulnerability factors that can get in the way of acting wisely. Factors that make us vulnerable to emotion mind include illness, sleep deprivation or tiredness, drugs or alcohol, hunger, overeating or poor nutrition, environmental stress, such as too many demands, and environmental threats. So, while aspects of reasonable mind are necessary for dealing with rational and logical matters, decisions, and plans, reasonable mind alone is not sufficient because it fails to consider our feelings and emotions. Now, while emotional mind 
does take into account our feelings and emotions. It does this at the expense of the logical and practical side of things. Now, wise mind is the synthesis of emotion mind and reasonable mind. It lies at the intersection of these other two states of mind. Wise mind is the wisdom within each of us and honors the truth in both reason and emotion. It's where reason and emotion overlap. Before we take a look at wise mind in more detail, let's take a look at examples of operating out of either emotional mind or reasonable mind. For an example of emotional mind, let's say you and your partner have an argument and you're really upset angry and anxious about the state your relationship is in. You are feeling so horrible, you insult your partner, calling them names, even throwing something across the room and slamming the door, announcing the relationship is over and you storm out. In this scenario, you are acting based on your emotions. Your urge to do something to stop feeling as bad as you do is so strong that it drives your actions overriding any voice of reason in your head. Another example of emotional mind is maybe you are in the middle of a very stressful assignment at work and you have reached your breaking point. You're overwhelmed and just can't take it anymore. Maybe you fling your work across the room in frustration. Maybe you send an email to your boss saying you're off the project or just leave and go home. You'll do anything you can to escape the overwhelming emotions you're having as quickly as possible. Then maybe you go have some drinks to help you forget about everything or go to bed and ignore calls, texts, and emails and barely get up for the next few days and hide from the world because you just can't face things anymore. Again, your emotions are dictating your actions and you're operating strictly out of emotional mind. This is not unusual because when we are feeling strong emotions, it can be difficult to access reasonable mind at all or to even remember that something like reasonable mind exists. Now, if you were to approach these same problems from reasonable mind, the results would be much different. In the first case, you might decide to take a time out and step away from the argument with your partner until you have both had a chance to calm down. Instead of ending the relationship then and there, maybe you would make a pros and cons list to try and figure out if the relationship is still working for you. And maybe you would find that even though there are some problems, overall, the relationship looks pretty good on paper. While this is a more reasonable approach, there's still something missing because it does not consider the true extent of the emotions you are feeling about the relationship. In reasonable mind, things can often look good on paper despite the fact that they don't make you happy. And maybe your pros and cons list looks like you should want to stay in the relationship, but you feel unloved, unsupported, and alone. Or you feel like you love the other person, but you are not in love with them. However, these feelings don't get factored in just from reasonable mind alone. In the work example, reasonable mind might tell you you can't walk away from your job until you have another one lined up, and for now, you just need to force yourself to get through it by surviving the next few weeks and hope things start to calm down and look better after that. In the meantime, you can update your resume and maybe start looking for another job. While that makes sense and is a reasonable thing to do, you can't always just grit your teeth and grind your way through something. 
more than half the total number of lost working days are due to stress, anxiety, and depression. Sometimes you can't ignore your feelings and just force yourself to do your job. Operating solely out of either reasonable mind or emotional mind does not allow us to see the whole picture. Instead, we need to look at the intersection between reasonable mind and emotional mind and how the two of these overlap. And so that's the first aspect of wise mind. Wise mind takes into account both reasonable and emotional mind. So looking at both what reasonable mind and emotional mind are telling us is a good place to start, but it's not sufficient and this is why we need wise mind. The essence of wise mind is that it taps into our intuition and inner wisdom. It does more than just take into account the reasonable and emotional side of things. It involves our gut feelings, and that's just not something we can get through analysis. It doesn't translate onto paper, and that's what's missing when we try to figure something out, but just can't find an answer that feels right. So how do we get in touch with this intuitive inner wisdom aspect of wise mind? Wise mind is considered a mindfulness skill. Wise mind involves approaching situations mindfully. Now, when we're being mindful, we're aware of our thoughts and we're aware of our feelings, but we're able to step back from them and maintain some distance and perspective and simply observe rather than getting caught up in them. When we do this, we start to calm our minds and our thoughts and emotions become more quiet. As a result, space opens up in our awareness and in this space, our intuition and inner wisdom or gut feelings can start to emerge. But this is not an immediate or automatic process. You can't just quiet your mind calm your emotions, and expect an epiphany to arrive. You can't just flick a switch and have a light bulb go off in your head that illuminates your inner wisdom. If you're not used to practicing mindfulness, you'll probably struggle to even quiet your mind at first. It's important to realize that insight and inner wisdom arise in their own time. All we can do is make space for the process to unfold by creating the right conditions, by quieting our mind and calming our emotions, which allows us to hear our inner wisdom when it tries to speak to us. One way we can try to access wise mind is to open ourselves up to both the reasonable and emotional mind side of you and bringing a question to mind and asking yourself, what feels true to you? Or test out a decision by asking yourself, does this feel right or true to me? You can't force yourself to have a moment of clarity or intuition. You can't control when wise mind speaks to you. You can only invite it in and then make sure you're listening. Another way of using mindfulness to encourage wise mind to speak to us is to start with a simple mindfulness of breath exercise. Simply bring your attention to your breath and follow the physical sensations of your breathing in your belly as it expands and contracts on each breath in and each breath out. Once your thoughts and emotions have started to quiet down, and your attention is focused on your breath, see if you can allow your mind to settle. Open yourself up to wise mind and see if any intuition or inner wisdom begins to emerge. Try not to be discouraged if you have trouble accessing wise mind. Accessing wise mind takes time 
and practice. Continue practicing because we all can tap into our inner wisdom. <laughs>